The Walking Dead Season 8, Episode 12, The Key. So this episode, I would definitely say, is uh, probably one of the better ones of the second half of the season so far. I really enjoyed it. We're getting into uh, some of the madness with Simon. I was like, all right, he's one of the kind of the newer elements. Like, well, what's going to happen with this guy? Because he's not in the comic books, uh, at least not in this role if he is, you know, at all. Um, so I was like, all right, where are things headed? Of course, you know, he has this big lie going on with... Uh, the trash people that's just what i'm going to call them and so you know i was like all right how is this going to play out where you know where are we headed with this negan wants to have you know his big show of force you would go in we have the guts on the knives and the sticks and this and that you know cut a few people hit a few people let them turn let them live you know chaos and of course simon isn't too happy with that dwight is uh kind of in like the super weird position of i definitely don't want negan to win and i don't want these other people to get killed but I can't say any of that stuff. Like, he can kind of work with Simon, who's against Negan, but Simon also still wants to kill everybody, so it's like, crap, he's still, you know, just as bad as Negan. But I like what they did with this episode. It's like, all right, we're all going in. Negan, Simon, like, all everybody that's there is headed to the hilltop. And I was excited. I was like, okay, how's this going to play out? Like I mentioned in my last review, um, the hilltop is kind of where the big battle takes place so i'm kind of waiting you know I, I was like it's pretty close although i did find out that we do only have like three episodes left or something like that i think we only have two i think it's next week and then the week after next is the season finale so it's gonna be pretty interesting really fast but this is definitely a good episode in itself uh without a doubt like just everything that went on you know simon saw the truck and was just like well oh. We'll see what happens there. And then, of course, you know, Rick hits Negan, which I thought was super. They were doing, like, some GTA stuff. He's, like, chasing them down. Then they get in a car crash. I don't even know how that played out because, of course, they don't show it. But it's, like, Negan's car is sideways. Rick's was just, like, bent into a pole. I was, like, what did he do to hit him and flip the car? And he still slammed into the pole. But either way, he gets out. He's going crazy. He's, like, I want Negan dead. So he's just lighting this car up. It should have exploded, admittedly, because uh, he was shooting it with an assault rifle. But he's lighting this thing up, and then he, I don't know, the TV stuff. So Negan runs into the, the building, and Rick is like, oh, well, it's a doorway, so I guess I'll throw this assault rifle down and pull out my six-shooter. I don't know. But uh, he did do a super sweet baseball slide, because he was about to get hit right in the head. And was like, oh, and you know, he was safe. So then they fight a little bit, and he shoots, and he keeps missing, because he always misses. Um, because if it ain't zombies or, you know, if it ain't a random thing, he, Rick always misses, honestly, but, you know, runs out of bullets. He actually runs out of bullets. It's like the first time I think they've ever actually shown him legitimately run out of bullets. And it was like, oh, he ran out of bullets. He didn't just have bullets on him, which also would have made way more sense. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of stuff I noticed. So I was like, has he always never had extra bullets? Like I just always assumed he had bullets in his pocket because he's always, cause I'm always counting. I mean, he has, it's a revolver and like he's six shots okay but they always do it and he stops at six so he never has to keep going or if it's a million zombies then he runs out and i guess no i think about it yeah he does run out and he just never effing has bullets on him i don't know i that just caught my attention how dumb that is like just bullets in your pocket anyway runs out of bullets and he goes like oh all right well now we can do some hand-to-hand -hand stuff here let's have some fun and <laughs> i don't know i mean it was genius but rick was just like i'm just gonna toss my little hatchet and he throws it straight up the steps and he can just falls down which i thought was the funniest thing and so you know he plugs it out of the wall and he's about to like chop his fingers off and he can just lets go and so then rick goes down and negan's freaking out it's like where's lucille i can't find her and there's a bunch of zombies you know walking into the building because rick was just like shooting up the car which i love that scene too when he was shooting it up and it was just like not even concerned with a bunch of zombies around it was just like just get out of my way and he's just like you know trying to shoot the car up and um you know they get into the basement and everything Negan's trying to find Lucille and then Rick is like you know this is what's gonna happen this and that and it's like oh I have your back I'll let you say goodbye and he lights it on fire which is immediately a cool scene because he lights it on fire and then he knocks the thing down that says eaters in it um which I think is new I don't think we've ever heard anybody call them eaters but he starts, you know, trying to knock the, the door in, and that's when Negan finds him, and they both slam through, and so they're fighting each other, and then Rick's got, like, a flaming bat, and he's hitting zombies, and they're lighting up like they're just covered in gasoline, because that's what they would have to be to light up that fast, um, or polyester. Um, so he's, like, hitting a bunch of zombies. They're all just lighting on fire, and Negan's like, we'll die down here. Like, if you keep doing this, we're both kind of screwed. But, of course, Negan ends up escaping. Um, I assume Rick did. We don't actually see Rick get out, but it's Rick, so he's not going to die. 
And so Negan ends up escaping, and I guess he passed out at some point. I, or maybe I just missed it where he was legitimately knocked out or something. But he wakes up in the car, and he's with Jadis. So I was like, all right, this should be interesting because all of her people are dead. Negan finds out while they're in the basement that Simon had everybody killed. And it was like, that, like, that idiot. And he probably figured out, like, he probably set this up. You know, he probably thinks Simon betrayed him. Like, he set him up to get attacked by uh, Rick. But it's like, all right, well... Simon screwed me over. He killed all the people. That idiot. So now he's with Jadis. And of course, she's not going to believe him. So we'll see how that ends up playing out. But I was like, all right, that was definitely interesting. Um, naturally, you have Simon and Dwight doing their thing where Simon just wants to kill everybody, but he wants to be in control. Dwight, want, you know, he's obviously a double agent right now. So it's like, all right, well, Negan, we don't know he's dead. They even say that where it's like, you know, he might not be gone, gone. He could just be gone for a little bit or whatever. So they don't say Negan's there because, of course, they didn't see it. But it's like, all right, for now, it's just us. Let's go kill. And, you know, Simon was just doing his thing to, so he could ramp everybody up to, you know, kill the hilltop. So very curious how that's about to play out. And I don't know if it's going to lead to kind of what they had in the comics. And Jadis is going to head to the hilltop with Negan or how that's going to play out. Because she's kind of just on her own. So I'm just curious how that's going to play out and what she'll even decide to do. She wants her revenge, but does it make more sense to just kill the guy or to take him to the hilltop where he would like suffer so it does make me wonder how that's going to play out because it's an anomaly as far as you know not being in the comics so i'm looking forward to that and then our other uh new storyline which i assume is something that they're going to be doing is like um our big lead-in into the next season is uh basically all the ladies went out to do kind of like this little recon mission it's like okay let's meet this lady you know she's all dressed up in like a white outfit and everything and she's got the two ladies uh where you like legitimately can't see their eyes because the glasses are so insanely dark so they meet them and it's weird it's super weird it's like all right you go around kind of meeting with communities you give knowledge and stuff like that which i would assume it worked everything works out between these people because if you go by the flash forward they're like talking about crops and this and that so i assume that you know that's how that started but they go through this process and it's like well where is this woman coming from what's her community like exactly and they talk about how they haven't found big communities really but they trade information for music which is another thing which i assume is because they already have the aqueduct so they probably already have the food which is why they trade for like music and stuff like that um i was like all right that's very interesting we'll see how this plays out because that's not something i'm familiar with uh, from the comics either so i'm like all right this seems like it's something that could lead into the next season and i'm just really curious how this season is going to end how much they're going to introduce the next arc because the next arc gets really weird and there's some pretty uh, based on where i ended in the comics excuse me the next arc especially with how you know, obviously there's no carl like that was a big part of the next arc like some of the stuff he was going through uh because that was in the comics at least he was officially like becoming a teenager and in this he he's dead so totally different but I'm curious how that's going to play out with the next set of villains that are coming along. And then you have these new allies that are there, which could be in the comics. And they're just introducing them earlier than you know, where I've gotten to just yet. Um, but it was just interesting watching. I was like, huh, I'm curious how this is going to play out. But like I said, if I'm going off of the flash forward, it seems like it worked out pretty well. But we still just kind of have to wait and see. But a lot of good stuff uh, based off of what we had here, where it's just like, all right. So Simon wants to go on his rampage. Dwight's stuck in the middle, still scared that this other woman's going to show up and, you know, kind of out him like, hey, he betrayed us. So I, I think he's just kind of waiting for that ball to drop. And then we have Negan being captured. Rick is somewhere in the basement. I'm sure he'll, like I said, he'll just hop out. No big deal. But a lot of weird stuff going on. So I'm definitely excited for the next episode, of course. Would love to know what you guys thought about this one. So please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts about it, your least favorite parts about it. And I would love to know your predictions on what in the world is going to end up happening with uh negan and jadis because it's just interesting it's like all right is she just going to kill this guy i mean she knocked him out she could have just killed him if that's what she wanted so it's like she's trying to torture him where's she going to take him what's she going to do with him how long will this last so i'd love to know your predictions on how that's going to play out and this is insanely random but uh rosita was dressed like sarah connor from terminator 2 like she like legitimately if you've seen terminator 2 you're probably thinking the same thing if not just look up sarah connor from terminator 2 it's like you know black tank top exact same hat long ponytails like did they know that they were doing terminator or was that just like super random because i was like 
she looks like Sarah Connor right now. Um, that's just random. I was like, I love Terminator 2. So when I saw it, was he like come around the thing? Like I didn't notice it during the first scene because I was doing other stuff. But when they held the woman up and she came out of you know from around the van, I was like, she's dressed exactly like Sarah Connor. It's like a different color hat. But I'm like, that's well, Sarah Connor. She's she's got the Sarah Connor T2 thing going. Super random. Just wanted to mention that. But like I said, I want to know what you guys thought about this episode and your theories for what Jadis is going to end up doing with Negan. So please put your comments down in the comment section below. And of course, thanks for watching.